Hey, y'all. In part one of this series, we created this stack text anniversary sign, and we left off with coming over here into the file menu and creating a template file. In this video, we're going to open that template file, change fonts, names, and dates, then save a new project. Before we get started, however, I neglected to tell you that even though I'm demonstrating this in Aspire version 10.5, this works exactly the same way in Cut 2D Desktop and Pro, VCarve Desktop and Pro, and Aspire. There is one exception, however. And that is, the VCarve toolpath is not available in Cut 2D. Now, if you missed Part 1 of this series, I've put a link to Part 1 down in the description box of this video. And I'll put a link up here in a card right about now. I've also put a link to the playlist of the Stack Text series down in the description box of this video. So let's go ahead and go into a new session of Aspire and get started. Opening up a template file is fairly straightforward. We'll just come over here under Startup Tasks to New File from Template. And I'll navigate to that template, which is right here, and I'll double click it to load it. Now, when you load a template file, by default, it's going to open up the job setup. And you'll notice the title of this file is new. This is not a standard CRV file. You cannot save any changes to this template. You will have to save a new project file. We'll go ahead and go through job setup. However, in this case, I'm not going to make any changes because I'm going to use the same size piece of material. It's a single-sided job. My width in X, height in Y, and material thickness are going to be the same. I am still going to set my Z0 at the material surface, and I'm still going to set my XY datum position to the center. I'm not going to be using any 3D models in this project, so my modeling resolution will stay at standard, and I'll click OK. This warning I'm getting that the tool will cut through the material is in reference to the toolpath we've already calculated for our cutout. I'll go ahead and click OK. Now we've received an order for another sign, so I'm going to have to go in and change names and dates, obviously. So let me come down here to the Layers tab, and all of our layers are turned on, and the active layer is currently the VCarve date. What I'm going to do right now, before I do anything else, is I'm going to turn off my first names, last names, bottom vCarve text layers. So all that I have showing are the inner and outer border, top text, bottom text, and vCarve date. These are the layers that we use to calculate the toolpaths. Well, since all of these names and dates are going to change, I'm going to go ahead and select them all, just box select all of them and delete them. Now, if you notice over here in the Layers tab, these have a figure of a square and a circle in them, indicating there is data on these layers. And when I deleted those vectors, these three layers are now blank. There are no vectors on these three layers. So now what I want to do is I want to turn on my first names because that's what I'm going to change. I'm going to make it the active layer. Then I'm going to turn off top text, bottom text, and vCarve date. 
I'm going to come back over into my drawing tab, and I want to change this text. And this is why we kept this as a text object on a separate layer. Because now it's just a case of box selecting my text, and I can come up here into Draw Text. And I have decided I need to change the font just slightly. The customer has decided they wanted to go with a font called Signature. So I'm going to come down here and find that font. Here it is right here. It's called Signature. It's slightly different, but still a nice script font. And I'm going to change this to reflect the client's names. We have Keith and Helen. And you'll notice the bounding box is still illustrated here. And it remembers what we set up in that template file. Now, I've decided I'm going to stretch this text up just a little bit. So I'll hold down Shift to edit from the center, and I'll come up to this box right here, and I'm going to stretch it upwards just slightly. That also changed the size of the bounding box. And I'm not going to apply any more vertical stretch or horizontal stretch. Everything else is good. And I'll click Close. Now, what I'm immediately going to do while this is still selected is right-click the text, copy to layer, top text. With that finished, I'm going to come over to my Layers tab down below. I'm going to turn on top text, click on it to make it the active layer, and turn off first names. Now I'm ready to go ahead back to the drawing tab and with it still selected I will weld replace. Now I need to kind of look in here because I thought I saw something funky. I did. I saw something funky right here. And that is these letters didn't quite match up. That's okay. I can select it, tap N to go into node editing, and I'm just going to put my cursor over this node here, delete that point, and I will delete this point here as well. Just kind of smooth everything out. Now I can tap the letter N to come out of node editing, select all of my text, and group it. My point in doing this was to let you know that even after it's converted to curves, you can still go in and node edit should you want to. So we have this now converted to curves and welded together. Now I want to right click it, copy to layer, bottom text. So now if I come over to my layers tab, turn on bottom text, I have it there as well. Turn off bottom text, and there is my top text. Now I'm ready to edit my last name. So I'll turn on last name, click on it to make it the active layer, turn off top text. Come back over to my drawing tab, select my last name text, go into my draw text window. Again, I'm going to change the font as the client would like to go with Britannic. So I will come down here and find. I'm looking for Britannic EF Ultra, is what we have decided on. And there it is. So I'll change the font. Slightly different. There are no serifs on there, no little bulges at the top or bottom. And now I need to enter their last name. So I'll press on Caps Lock. 
and we'll change that name to Williams. Turn off my caps lock and I'll close it. Now, with it still selected, I can right click, copy to layer, bottom text. Now I can come over to my layer manager, turn on my bottom text layer, select it to make it the active layer, turn off last names. So now I have bottom text turned on and active. I can select all of the text in here, come back over to drawing, and weld. I want to replace the vectors, and there is our bottom text. I'm going to immediately group those vectors, and we have our bottom text. Now, all that remains is the bottom V carve text, V carve date. So, let me turn on bottom V carve text. Select it to make it the active layer. Turn off bottom text. Come back over to the drawing tab. Select the text. And now I'll change this date by going into the draw text window. I need to change the date here. I'm going to leave this brush script because this looks good for this date layout. But I need to enter their wedding date. And just coincidentally, it happens to be March. But I'm going to change that to the 15th. And their anniversary date was 1950. I'll go ahead and close that. Then immediately right click, copy to layer, V carve date. Now I'll come back over to my layer tab, turn on V carve date, select it to make it active, turn off bottom V carve text, go back over to the drawing tab and with it still selected, weld that text. I want to replace the vectors and immediately group them. Now I'm ready to calculate my toolpaths. That's how easy it is. We'll go over to the Layers tab, and just as we did in Part 1 of this series, we'll turn on the bottom text, we'll turn on the top text layers, and these three layers here will remain turned off for the duration of this video. Now, VCarve date is the active layer, but that's okay. Again, we associated layers with our toolpaths. So, let's go over to the Toolpath tab. And normally, we would have to come over here and go through each one of these and select the vectors and recalculate the toolpaths. But because we have associated these toolpaths with the layers. All I have to do is come up to this icon and recalculate all toolpaths. It went through and recalculated them all. It's warning me that the tool is going to cut through the material on the cutout toolpath here, which is OK. All toolpaths have been successfully recalculated. Now we can go into preview. I'm not going to change any colors. And we'll preview all toolpaths. With our tool paths previewed, I can double click the waste, and there is our new project finished using the template. It's really that simple. The hard work is coming up with the original design, setting up all of these layers, 
and getting everything associated, the tool paths associated with these layers, the rest of it becomes simple. Now, something I neglected to tell you in part one of this series is when the design is complete, we have to save the project file as well as the template. Now, I don't need to save another template. I have the original. But I do need to save a standard, in my case, CRV 3D file. I'll navigate to the correct folder and I'll enter Williams. Anniversary. Ah, I still can't spell. And we'll save that project file. It really is as simple as that. All of the hard work is done in getting the sign laid out, getting the tool paths created, and associating these tool paths with the vectors that are on the individual layers. Anytime you need to use that template after that, you just saw how simple it is to go in to the Layers tab, delete all the data on these three layers, then go one by one through first name, last name, bottom v carve text and change names change fonts change dates then do your copy and do your welding come back over and recalculate those tool paths all of my tool settings the depths of cut feeds and speeds everything was saved with that template file. So if I should get another order for another client, I can open that template and it was just that simple to make all these changes, recalculate the tool paths. Now I can save G code and go outside and cut this project. So I hope you got something out of this video. And if you did, I do hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Now, as usual, this afternoon at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, I'll be hosting a live Q&A session where we can discuss creating the template, using the template after it's created, or anything else that I've demonstrated in this video or part one of this series. Again, that's today at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on my YouTube channel. And I've placed a link to this live Q&A down in the description box of this video. Now, these live Q&A sessions are a great reason to go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. And when you click that red subscribe button, Click that little bell icon right next to it. Then click it again and set that menu to all notifications. Then you'll get a notification the next time I post a video and the next time I go live. So I hope to see you this afternoon for the live Q&A session. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch. And y'all take care.